They can stock up on food all they want, but when the shit hits the fan, liberals are going to be sorely lacking in one critical skill set. You know what I'm talking about. So let's talk about it. I love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now waiting, better believe in your mind, because it's everything. You can mold, shape, find almost anything. There are so many skills that you need to hone before a true collapse event. And if you don't have all of them, you're going to have some major issues. I, why is this even here? We're not going to be talking about firearms today. And did I mention liberals? I meant everyone. This is a problem that I see everyone having. And we're going to talk not only today about what that problem is, but how to solve it. What is this problem? This is something I see uh, as a tremendous issue specifically for a lot of people who are in the prepping community. And this is interpersonal sort of communications and relationships. Uh, and I don't, I don't say that as a way of like, you know, uh, dissing people. I, I think it's a problem and a challenge that we all have, that, that feeling of having a difficulty connecting with other people, but it is going to be such a critical skill in a real collapse event. You know, here on this platform, uh, you know, politicians try to do it to us, this platform tries to do it to us for sure, advertisers uh, try to do it to us. They're always trying to divide us and tell us what's different between, you know, you and this other group and, you know, you guys are like oil and water and you just don't mix and they're crazy and you're sane and, and at the same time they're telling that other group that you're crazy and, and that other group is sane. P people are always trying to divide us. But it's critical during an emergency situation that we remember that we have so much more in common than we have differences between us. You know, whether you're on the left end of the spectrum or the right end of the spectrum, we all want kind of the same things. We want a, a nice health, uh, a nice, <laughs> you'd think that I'd be able to say it if it's so common for everyone. We want a nice, healthy, safe environment for ourselves and our families. We want a, a, some kind of a, a prospect for a positive future for ourselves and our families. We all really want the same thing. Sometimes we are just disagreeing about how to get there, specifically because politicians try to get us to disagree about things because that's the way that we're more easily controlled. But that's going to be a real problem during an SHTF event if we have trouble interacting with people that are different from us because we're really going to need to lean on everyone. The doctor that uh, you know is, might be you know as liberal as you can be is going to need you know the help of people who know about you know defense and you know keeping community safe. People who have expertise in commu uh, keeping a community safe, you know, that have expertise in these things, you know, they're still going to need the help of uh, you know doctors and uh, you know other people that have other sorts of skill sets. It's really critical that we build communities that go across all of these artificial barriers that are thrown up. That's really important. That's point one. To recognize that that's really important because we're really all going to need each other and it's, um, it's really critical to have those skills. And those skills are something that's really eroded in our society. Uh, you know, we live in what we call a civilization. And I think oftentimes people uh, take that for granted that, you know, we were born into a civilization. We'll always have a civilization. A lot of people take that for granted. Another thing that people take for granted is that uh, it doesn't take work to maintain that civilization, that uh, we can be as uncivil as possible with each other, and that's not going to have any downside uh, ramifications on our civilization. You need to know how to be civil to keep your civilization. Now, what does it take to be civil? Well, civil is, uh, you know, recognizing the humanity of the other person and being able to connect with other people, at least in some sort of uh, way where you can, uh, you know, not be in conflict with other people. And that connecting is what I want to talk about uh, in this video today. How can you connect with people that are really different? And this is something that I've always had kind of uh, an issue with. I think, you know, we oftentimes, uh, and this is another way we like, uh, like to break the world up. It's like we've got introverts and we've got extroverts. Well, I think a lot of people, uh, you know, even if you're seen as being an extrovert, and I think most people that are watching this channel would think, uh, hey, Praxis, he's an extrovert. He does these, uh, you know, videos and he's always interacting with people. And I feel like I uh, sound fairly uh, uh, understandable uh, and uh, articulate when I'm describing them. No, I'm not going to call myself articulate, but you know, I, I think a lot of people would think that I'm an extrovert, but in reality, I kind of like just sticking to myself. When I'm in a group of people, I, um, you know, I, I'm pretty good at creating small talk because I've practiced it, but it's not something that, um, it's not something that came naturally. It's not something that, uh, 
I'm perfectly happy kind of just staying in the shadows on the edges of a situation. Uh, I, I don't naturally kind of flow into that kind of center uh, situation, which I guess is uh, very evident here on YouTube because my channel's this like kind of fringe kind of edge kind of channel. Um, but my point here is that whether you think someone's an introvert or an extrovert, these are skills that you can learn and they're skills that you can practice. So if you want to be better at connecting with people, if you recognize that, especially in a crisis situation, it'd be really important for people to be able to connect with you. And, and that is such a, a, a critical skill, is to be able to connect with people so that they can know that you're there and know your value. Uh, when I was working as, as a cinematographer, uh, that's a, kind of my, my primary job. I, I'm a director of photography for movies and TV and stuff like that. Uh, when I was doing that kind of a work, uh, that kind of work, um, I was good at it. I, you know, I, I, I could create nice images, and uh, you know, there were lots of pieces that I was proud of. I was like, oh, you did a really good job on that. Um, so I wasn't terrible at it, but I also wasn't the best at it. But I got hired an awful lot. Now, why did I get hired an awful lot if I wasn't the absolute best in, in, in that industry? Uh, you know, there were plenty of other people, you know, plenty of people that went to communications colleges and wanted to, wanted to have that job, but why do people keep hiring me? Because uh, there were plenty of other people that were better than me. Well, one of the reasons is that I was just personable. I was pleasant to be around, and that is something that is really, really valuable. In a crisis situation, you want people to see you as being pleasant to be around if you want to create a community with other people, and you do need to create a community with other people. Um, if you are building a community, you can have uh, two candidates. I know it's not like a formal uh, job interview process, but you know you can have two potential candidates, and you can have someone that is uh, you know fairly proficient in things, but isn't like you know the absolute best. Uh, but they're really easy to work with. They're really um, comfortable to, to to be around. And then you could have someone that maybe has better skills than that person, but they're just a real asshole to be around, and you just don't want to be near that person. Who do you think is more likely to get accepted into that community? It's the person that's pleasant to be around. So these are really critical skills to have so that you can be a valuable member of a community. And also, you know, to be honest, it makes your life more enjoyable because uh, these skills that I'm going to talk about in this video, they are ways of connecting with other people, but they're also ways of uh, enjoying your life more. In the same way that prepping is a way of uh, preserving your life, if you're ever in an emergency situation, you can kind of avoid dying. Uh, living in a preparedness sort of mindset, living a preparedness lifestyle also has a lot of really rich uh, benefits for your life here and now. Uh, like, you know, where I am right now, I'm out in the middle of the woods, I'm not doing this from the, uh, you know, some city where I've got, you know, people I gotta worry about, whether they're gonna rob me or, you know, do whatever. Uh, you know, moving out to the country is something I did for prepping and preparedness, but it also has all these side benefits where, oh, the air out here, it just rained last night, it's, you know, rich and, and uh, you know, clean and the, the ability to interconnect with other people uh, not only is going to be a skill set that's useful, it also just makes your life a lot more enjoyable. So what, what can you do? If you have trouble connecting with other people, what can you do about that? Well, the first uh, thing to do is to not put too much pressure on yourself. If you go into situations and you're like, I need to make a friend today, you know, that's a lot of pressure and it's just going to make you feel awkward and you're probably going to come off as awkward <laughs> around people. The first thing you need to do is just understand that this is just sort of like a mindset that you put yourself into and sometimes you're going to connect with people, sometimes you won't connect with people, but the, uh, the skills that we're going to talk about are skills to open the potential door for that happening. So what is that? Uh, well, the way that it works is that you try to connect with someone in some way that they find interesting. Uh, you know, how does that work? I mean, there's plenty of boring people out there. There are people that are so different from you that maybe you have completely different interests. But every time you meet a new person, you have kind of this, this cool opportunity to get to see the universe through another pair of eyes. I, I forget, was it, was it Carl Sagan or was it, it was some, one of these famous science communicators that talked about like uh, intelligence or humans are the way, I think they're actually, it was broader. They said like intelligent, intelligent life is the way that the universe sees itself. Uh, you know, it's the way that the universe gets to experience itself. Because, you know, we're all made out, you know, there's a really uh, cheesy, uh, you know, phrase about we're made out of star stuff. You know, we're made out of, you know, the bits and particles of the universe. And we've become, uh, you know, conscious. And we're this amazing, magical way in which the inanimate world gets to manifest in a way where it gets to appreciate itself. Well, when you meet another person, you have an opportunity to see a completely different to see through a completely different set of eyes on that universe. And that's a really cool opportunity. And if you look at it like that, it can give you an opportunity to 
you know, understand what is the, um, the what are the interesting kind of things that you could try to learn about this other person. Uh, you know, you could if this person seems to enjoy what they do for their work. You know, you could ask them about about that, like you know. Um, you know, you know what, what is it that got you enthusiastic about what you're doing? If this person doesn't seem to enjoy your, their work, you could ask them, well, well, you know, if you had like $100,000, you could start your own business. What would you be interested in doing? The key is when you're trying to connect with people, try to figure out what that person finds interesting and exciting about life and then kind of get to vicariously through asking them questions, you know, find out more about that. People love talking about things that they are interested in. They love talking about things that uh, they're excited about. And it's a great opportunity for you to kind of uh, get another window on different ways of being excited about this world. So that would be the primary thing that I would say is as you're meeting new people, if you have trouble like, striking, up, striking up conversations with people, if you're, tr you have trouble kind of making that connection, it's not about making the connection. The connection kind of happens on its own. What it's about is trying to find out what someone is excited about and give them an opportunity to share that with you. People love sharing what they're excited about with you. And that's really it. Uh, that is the, f the first kind of skill set that I would suggest is as you're out and about, you know, it can be something about you notice about something about the person's clothes. I'm wearing like a North Face jacket, you know, that, that would be a possible connection point, you know, if, if you see a person with a pistol on them, uh, you know, I mean, you could ask questions about that. Uh, this is an SR-22 pistol. I actually just got it yesterday. That's why I decided to use it in this video. Uh, there's actually an interesting story behind this, this pistol. Uh, and that, that is that I've been trying to guard the chickens <laughs> from a hawk. Uh, when I grew up here in New England, uh, seeing any kind of birds of prey was really rare. Uh, you know, things were uh, kind of uh, recovering from like the DDT and like their populations had collapsed. And uh, it's really great seeing birds of prey here in New England again. It was really, really rare when I was little. Now you're seeing more of them. There's even bald eagles here. You never used to see bald eagles. So it's really exciting to see that. But you have chickens and birds of prey like to prey on things. Um, and I don't want them eating my chickens. I also don't want to kill this hawk because, you know, it's a really special thing, uh, you know, and they're, they're repopulating and, you know, I kill one hawk, there'll be another, there'll be another hawk, but I, I, I don't like the idea of destroying that. I had been walking around with, with an SR-22 rifle, uh, which I have, uh, because, you know, the, uh, the 22 ammo is, you know, it's, it's less expensive. Uh, and I have been doing that just as kind of a noisemaker. And um, it was really awkward. I felt I was like on like some kind of like security detail for like, um, like a financial conference that like, uh, where's that place over in? Europe begins with a D. You guys can tell me down below. Davos. <laughs> I felt like I was one of these security guards on the roof, like in all the pictures of Davos. Like I've got like my rifle, you know, my head's on a swivel with the chickens all around me. It was just kind of awkward because my hands were all, all tied up and everything. So I actually just got this pistol the other day. It shoots off the the cheaper 22 ammo. Um, and you know my hands are free and also it's kind of nice more for training that I can use the cheaper ammo instead of you know my other pistol is a, a Glock that shoots 9mm rounds and it's more expensive so there's a whole story behind that pistol that I had in my hand and if you can find those little stories with people they love talking about them I mean you could probably tell from me talking about my experience here I get to talk about my childhood I get to talk about my love of birds of prey I get to talk about my chickens a little bit and you know kind of the, like the weird situation I was kind of in uh, you know felt felt like I was uh, you know defending them and everything people love talking about things that they're interested in so when you are near someone try to figure out some things they might be interested in and talk about their interests you know don't worry about talking about your interests because uh, talking about what you're interested in is a missed opportunity to kind of leech off of that other person and uh, you know get that get to take advantage of that opportunity to see the world through their eyes you get to see the world through your eyes all the time don't feel like you need to share that with other people I mean don't be stingy about it you know if people ask you about it but whenever you're interacting with someone so frequent in our frequently in our uh, culture and here on YouTube people just want to hear themselves talk uh, but that is starving that individual for the opportunity to you know learn something from someone else you know you always have access to your own brain you don't need to hear yourself talk about that and don't pass up on the opportunity to learn something about someone else, get someone excited about something, and possibly, possibly, don't put any pressure on it, but possibly make a new connection, make a new friendship, slowly over time. I know a lot of you guys had uh, asked me about uh, this topic and uh, a lot of people wanted me to kind of discuss this a little because the ability to connect with other people and build communities is so, so critical in a collapsed environment. 
you know, these sorts of things, I think certainly have their place in that kind of uh, environment. Having food stocked up certainly has its place. But the ability to interconnect with other people, I think is probably the most undervalued prepper skill. And that is why, look at the, how many people have watched this video. Almost nobody. I think I maybe tricked some people at the beginning because I showed a firearm at the beginning. But, um, you know, I, I imagine they probably dropped off fairly early on. But it's a super, super critical skill. And the better you get at it, the more practice you get at it, you know, the more benefit you're going to get out of it. Not only for building a group, building a community, building a friend network, but also just enjoying your life and getting to see this amazing universe through other people's eyes. That's it. Thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every week for new videos. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so through Patreon or PayPal.